But where does the anger come from? I suppose struggling in Croydon and not like doing jobs that are whack and sort of like frustration in music, innit? it? Especially when I was coming up, like you've you sort of build that frustration and not making it to trying to make it, innit? it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's that sort of like what's the word drive, innit? it? Mm. So the drive to not struggle in it. As I was saying. The struggle makes you what you are. So you're sort of at a double-edged sword. Like, mm. if I do struggle to make it, what am I going to talk about? You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Let's jump in. Yeah, let's do it. What's going on? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the great honourable Cracker John. Oh, oh. All right. Oh. Listen up, burn weed, coffee and bridges all at the same time. Erase the space that you can find to a vagrant design. So maybe take the sign that you ain't made for this way to display your fragrant life because you're a vagrant type. Yo, I'm amazing on the mic, it's never elevated hype I bet forever, brother, I'm a clever state of mind Hailing majors and vice while I'm inhaling flavours nice I ain't on spice, don't make me say it twice Yo, this tailor made designs up in these crazy times Yeah, I'm lazy and I made me signs, so what? I open these smoke pot and know my soul will rot And yo, I don't stop, cause crack a journal carry on Until I'm over the top and you're like, yo, what? Yo, I owe a lot to this so-called god But money isn't sat and you can give him to know the plot Rum and soda top, supposed I'm supposed to rock uh. Alright What we say, yes, good yes. inside Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct Central London, or as central as you need to be It's about that time Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk Hold tight to all the originals Sharing is caring, you know We get the best out of you Strange station inside the house Without question, as you've heard the sultry voice of a man, fetching in my opinion, somebody in the UK hip hop scene has been holding it down the realest way possible, man. The voice it comes through the boom bap like butter, knife to butter, and uh, with a new project in tow. That's true. Where Big is shout the project? Out, cracker Joe. Hang on. Where is so your present? Place. It's over there. Where is it? Let me get it. Yeah, you know, we didn't pre plan this at all. No, no. <laughs> I've got a present for you. You didn't know. There you go, my friend. Cracker Yo! John's final. Go and get yours now at Bandcamp. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, are, if, you are, if you are listening and not watching, I've just been given a signed, gifted new album. Cracker John is side the place. Big ups, that's what you, Silence by Gizmos and Toys. What are you saying on this? Now, this is some album art right here. Who did the artwork? It's a lady called Bad Connection. It's on the back, B-A-A-D, Connection. She's a sick artist. Uh, violently all got in contact with her. Asked her to do all the artwork and stuff. So I gave the idea, the album bought from Science by Gizmos and Toys is a George Carlin quote. So I'm yeah. a massive George Carlin fan. Yeah. Hold so, tight George Carlin yeah, all yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, big ups, man. Like my father figure. If you don't know, Google that shit. Yeah, for real. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this stuff. Growing up like 40, I don't know my dad and stuff yet, but growing up like 14 odd, yeah, yeah, I remember just watching his stand up and being like, this is mental, like mad informative, innit? Rather yeah. than like, you're used to like British stand ups, British, like Michael McIntyre, stupid and silly and. What's that other geezer whack. called? Uh, There's just so much shit out yeah, there. Yeah, it's dry, isn't it? Yeah. So when you see someone talking stuff like that, you're like, right, you pay more attention to it. So Bought Off mm. and Silence by Gizmos and Toys, it's one of his yeah. quotes off uh, one of his stand-ups, isn't I'm it? not going to lie, I've been listening to it in the gym. I, I didn't have the vinyl. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was going to, wasn't I? But then we kind of, <laughs> we kind of bought, bargained to a deal because I was super keen to have you on the podcast. Yeah, of course, man. And you, you were like, well, I'm super keen to have it, so why don't we just do it? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Scully in the cut, come on. Hold yeah, we've got DJ Justin. Scully back from, back from the yeah. grave. I don't know where he's been, man. I, yeah. just, I was like, no, we've got to get him on, man. The ever-elusive DJ Scully. In it, exactly. Yeah. It's almost like it's almost like you see Scully the next day. He's exactly the same as you left him, but to find him, he's 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 like a... yeah. Well, shouts to Violent Leo. He found him, man. So big ups to Violent Leo. Hold tight, Violent Leo. Man. Again, hold tight, Scully, world champion. Mm. Right there. Um, Chance yeah. T, of course. You know the, the, that man. He puts in the labour, man. Proper he's a legend, DJ. Man. Yeah, yeah. To get to get any DJ on there, mm. that's that legendary status, man. It's mad. Impre- I'm mad impressed that 
mm, what we've sure. managed to flip in create, man. Yeah. So we might, if for those of you who ain't uh, familiar with the recent hip hop resurgent in the UK, and believe me, he ain't gone anywhere. It's just got better with age. Uh, yeah, some of this, sure. some of these names, and you know, even Cracker John himself might be a little unfamiliar. But we're going to get deep into it. We're going to get deep into the context, the concepts, everything about the album, right way through to your voice and lineage, man. Because I'm telling you, doesn't matter where I hear the voice. I just feel like the more aggy you get, the more identifiable you suddenly become. It's like, like, yeah, yeah, like emotion, yeah, sort of, like for real, pure emotion. Yeah, yeah. Where does yeah. that come from? I don't know. I suppose being angry. I suppose at everything. Like I don't know. Being like you know, like I suppose when you're struggling and stuff, and rather than you take all that struggle and emotion, you put it onto. Not everyone does. Some people draw. Some people ride a bike, mm. do a marathon. I was like, no, I'm gonna write lyrics. I did it when I was like 14 odd or something. Mm. And then it was about 16, I think it got serious. And then I started spitting over grime. Mm. So I was 16, grime was like the thing. Mm. And then people started going, yeah, you're sick. Duh, duh. And that's when I started learning about hip hop. Mm. Like the first two albums that ever got showed was Company Flow, Fun Crusher Plus mm. and Dead Prez, Let's Get Free. That's all you need. Yeah, that dude does all you need in your life. That blew my mind insanely. Yeah. And I learned about organised confusion, <laughs> um, so obviously Smith & Wesson, Duck Down, mm. Helter Skelter, all them lot. Mm. And just learned like all the lyrical capabilities you can do, man. Do you yeah. know, I, I listened to Eminem at first, didn't it? We all yeah. get going through that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But then yeah. I was like, no, sod this, I can do this but better, yeah, yeah. realistically. Well, yes, realistically, very much so. You work with patterns. And it's interesting that you you go down the road of company flow first. Because of cause LP and Big Just, they just had this way about them that... It was like a new New York. And so unique. Like, so different. Like, the the, yeah. the actual... The amount of words they get into something, like, was insane. It wasn't... I love my Das effects and stuff like that because the flow is insane. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, and I really like it. A lot of my stuff comes from that sort of... Da, 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 da flow. And if you don't know about these guys, Google that shit. You know yeah, please do. do. You should, if you're watching this podcast and you don't know about these people... You need to do your research for sure, yeah. man. 100%. And if you're listening, you should be backing this up. Get the playlist ready. Yeah, nice. get your notes out on your phone. Do you know what I mean? We're going to mention a lot of cool people mm. that you should definitely look up, mm. man, for sure. Starting with Killer Keller. Start- exactly. <laughs> Killer Keller, Cracker John. Cracker John inside the place. Um, so, where's the anger come from? What is the anger that, that fuels you? Because I know what you mean. There sometimes needs to be that uncertainty to drive that level of anxiety through. If yeah. you were sitting on the pot of gold right now, it'd be pretty nice, but you wouldn't have the same anxiety, would it? I always think that. Like, it's weird, because I, I, I don't know, how do you put it? Like, it feels like it's better to be poor and struggling than make good music, because it does look like when familiar, you make yeah. it... This I was thinking this on the way, actually. I was listening to Das FX Hold It Down, the album. Great album. If you look at most hip-hop albums, their second album is never really as good as the first. It's, it's, if you it's really true. think about it's it. True. No disrespect to any artist, but that's my opinion. You can form your own. Yeah. That's effects that's their third album maybe yeah, yeah, and it's banging it's man. so good and how I was do like, they do that though i don't know it's the, it's the pattern in it so i'm saying they've got a formula and they stick to it i mm. think there's a chorus i did years ago so that stick to what you're good at mm. i always think that like if you've got a formula this is why i don't i make beats but i don't focus on making beats mm. do it for fun because mm. i know that mute, like writing lyrics is my forte do you mm. know what i mean but I, I like to do all the elements of it but you should definitely stick to what you're good at and sort of Use your, like your beatboxing and stuff, man. Do you know what I mean? That's why we kicked it off with the beatbox rap thing. <laughs> Come do you know what I mean? That's what I'm Absolutely. saying. It's, and it's also, there's a level of how people have discovered you. Because yeah. that's the thing. There's some people that, out there that I know, that, and, and rightly so, that they discover through podcasts and I fucking know beatbox as well. And I kind of like that too. But then, like you say, if you don't cultivate those things and you don't bring your own authenticity to it, yeah. then when you actually go and change lanes, like I'm going to wear a shiny suit and yeah, start yeah, jiggy yeah. with it, there's a problem. Yeah, exactly. Because you've not like, brought yourself up. Mm. I remember Ollie Sudden said that because he does a radio show. Big up Ollie. He, yeah, big up Ollie for All Sudden, day. man. We're speaking about him later. Mm. But um, he told me that um, when he's doing the radio show, people are like, oh, you rap as well. It's the same sort of stuff, innit? Because people only... They get introduced to you by a different <laughs> lane, innit? Like, I mean, he's just an all-rounder. Yeah, exactly. It's mad interesting, man. Yeah, it's mad interesting. He sort of got me into... Because he used to do a show in Croydon called Bangers. It's like a hip-hop night. I was about 20, maybe. Like, 19. And I used to go there and rap. And he obviously encouraged me to keep coming. And then I sort of built a report. That's how I met Too Late. So I'm at Revorg. Mm. Like, it's all just a big Croydon community. Yeah, that whole Croydon scene. And big up, Ollie, again. You check out his show on Flex FM. That's yeah, yeah. Every Thursday, I believe, yeah. 12 till 2. <clears throat> that's right. And 
uh, him orbiting around with ties, big up ties, uh, mm. all the man, all the suicide skier crew. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, big up. Yes. Plug me, come on, everybody inside. Big, big up ties, I think he was the first one to get one when I had the vinyls by myself, so big up to Ed. Um, Very generous character, is Yeah, Tizer. man. He's all, Most he's humble guy I know, yeah. swear down. He's, he's part of the scene, he's part of the tapestry. Um, but where does the anger come from? I suppose struggling in Croydon and not like doing jobs that are whack and sort of like frustration in music, innit? Especially when I was coming up, like you've you sort of built that frustration and not making it to trying to make it, innit? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's that sort of like what's the word drive, innit? Mm. So the drive to not struggle, innit? As I was saying, the struggle makes you what you are. So you're sort of at a double edged sword. Like mm. if I do struggle to make it, what am I going to talk about? Do you know what I mean? Ooh, like if yeah. that if that's just, if that if it makes sense, isn't it? Yeah, well, it does because we're talking about authentication, authentic, authenticity. Yeah, yeah, authenticity. So yeah. what happens then if you do? Because what what do you define as making it, and how does that disrupt what? Well, yeah, exactly. See, this is why Das Effects was sick because they still stuck to their formula. Eve, I'm guessing they made. I don't know if they made a lot of money, but they were pretty big in the '90s, yeah. so they must have made a bit of money. Yeah. They had the whole I mean, fashion ooh. thing as well. They had the whole fashion thing popping off as well, didn't they? They did, yeah. They did, like forty belows. I did, you, know, you know, I can't think of. Does effects wearing, I don't know. Flip, yeah, mad like flip flops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like Versace and stuff like that. It's all yeah. ghetto, like Tim boots yeah. and stuff, like rago stuff. Oh, I used to, mate. I, it's more culture than what, because I suppose <clears throat> I, answering that, if you stick to the cult, sorry, I keep knocking this, I don't know if it's going to affect it. It's all going to fall apart. Oh, shit. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> if you stick to the culture, I suppose, then your music's going to be authentic, innit? Yeah. But if you then get money and then. I suppose some people end up getting money and they're like, oh, is this the way I can make money? Rather than concentrating on keeping yeah. the music authentic. Because if you notice, like, people like, I suppose, like, EPMD or anyone like that, they've, suppose they've been consistent, in it, And mm. they're respected, like, from the underground, mm. whereas people have sort of lost that. There's a, a, do you know Little Brother, The Minstrel Show? Yes. There's a, I love that album. That's, that's a great insane. album. Shouts to Prova, because he showed me that album, and that's mm. insanely good. But there's a bar and it's mm. like, I never heard a rap to go and, Blow and go global and come back home and still be called local. And I'm just like, yes, that's so true. It's all I mean, of that. Yeah. It that's makes in a sense. nutshell. So, yeah, I like to be a people person, innit? But I'd love to make it with music, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I do think it might affect the... I don't know, maybe not. If you stay true to it, you're all right. Do you know what I mean? You just got to yeah. be patient. Like I said, I've got patience of a saint, man. I'm yeah. Just, just hanging in there on a the thread, just swinging on the, you know. Yeah, but there's a bit of you... And I'm not saying it's to all to the degree of how you'd ever want it, but you come across with a character, like you say, you're, you know, you're softly, softly. You're not, you know, there's no, there's no finishing line. Right. There must be a little bit of yellow that could do with just a, you know, just a, just a, some, a level of assurance to know that, because you don't know what the end goal is, do you? Not really, no. Do so, any so of us. Ha- yeah. I mean, it's getting a bit profound now, but, <laughs> but we are talking about, I guess, again, I guess there's no race to legacy, is there? No, life isn't a race, really. No. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I, lo- I wrote that. You know, I've got notes in my phone and stuff, and one of the things I wrote the other day was life isn't a race. It's weird you brought it up, because mm. it's true, innit? Like, we're all... I suppose everyone's got a goal, innit? But it just depends how quick you want to reach it. Yeah, but you're extra laid back. Before we jumped on, <laughs> right, John was like, yeah, I've just got locked out of my Instagram account. I was like, really, what happened? He goes, I think I just pressed oh, yeah. the wrong button. That's certainly... I'm like, dude, if that was me or any other person <laughs> in this century... <laughs> We would just be absolutely, me- we'd be melting in the corner, wondering I'm what not the meaning gonna, of life I probably was. wrote a couple bars after, like, you, like, do you know what I mean? But flipping, yeah, I don't, by the way, yeah, no, Cracker John hasn't got Instagram anymore. Anyone that is looking for me and thinks I've blocked them or anything, I haven't, get a hold of me via Facebook. That's a good point, because I know you've got some dealings that are going on over yeah, there, you know, some so, beat making projects and stuff, so, yeah, hit them up, hit the kid up, or hit DM me and I'll connect you. Please do. There you go. See, that's how we roll it, family vibes over there. Exactly. Um, growing up, Croydon. It was fun. Yeah? Can you yeah. enjoy it? It was quite fun, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would t- I, I, ironically, Croydon's got a bad rep, yeah? But I lived in central Croydon, mm. and the only time it got bad is, like, people would have beefs and stuff, but it'd be in, like, Sellerst or Fort Neath mm. or, like, the surrounding areas, and they'd be like, oh, well, you want to fight, yeah? Let's meet in Croydon and have a fight. So mm. they'd, that West Croydon's pretty rough. So it's rough. got a bad rap, then? Yeah, that's mm. why, because everyone just comes to there to organise fights and stuff. Mm. It was pretty bad. Like, I got robbed a couple of times, but mm. nothing to... I mean, it got worse over the years, but, yeah. like, I don't know, I grew up, like, late 80s, early 90s, mm. sort of. It was pretty bad, but it was sort of like, yeah. As long as you kept to yourself, you were right. And how much you... Big up my Croydon lot. You know, Crocs is definitely popping. 
But how much of it after a while? You don't know no different. I mean, you can go yeah, out, it's your life, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You sort of get used to it, innit? Yeah. And so, like, I went travelling around Asia, like, for about a couple of months, and that, like, yeah, it makes you see the rest side of the side of the world, do mm. you know what I mean? Makes you really realise. Yeah, it. man. It makes you, mate, I saw people in Vietnam, like, swimming in a river using, like, Tesco plastic bags as armbands. I was just like, raw. Like, That's crazy. Yeah, bro, it's, it's nuts, man. It's I like... see these things on Instagram, and this is slightly off topic, but I see, and I always wonder what the hell it was. There was like an old, always an old lady, um, and, uh, you know, Eastern, mm. and she's by a, a fire and she's cooking up cans of beer, uh, you know, crushed beer cans. What? Like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, yo, I mean, I know, you know, without pleading ig- too much ignorance, I was just like, no, what, they're not, they're not, they're clearly not cooking, cooking now. What are they doing with it? And it would only be like a 15 second reel. Yeah. Now the reels have opened up, I was looking at it and I was like, yo. So what happens is they melt the shit down underneath the fire, then it gets passed over to this guy who shaped the, the sand to the shape of a pan. And oh, they've got a hole shit. and they pour the, the, the aluminium into the hole and it immediately cools down because of the sand and they create Make a pan pans. Out of it. Which Bloody is incredible. Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just different Shit. worldly stuff that we just wouldn't ever come Bro, in contact with. That's out with. of this world, man. That's yeah. fucking crazy. It just wouldn't ever come into that kind of sphere. We're, we're so complacent over here, aren't we? Like our world's everything's really... just on a plate here, man. That's the problem. Yeah. This is why I like being innovative and stuff like that. Like I remember back in the day uh, when I was first recording with well, what is known as Big Toast, and mm. now mm. Um, we did only built for Croydon Links old school album. That's very <laughs> that's amazing. A uh, very rare. Yeah, I'll Google that shit. I'm on that. That's before I was Cracker John. I was called Curious B at the time. Oh, so yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, very yeah, back yeah. in the day. This is the banger sort of days of yeah. all of a sudden that. Got like, you. But we were recording with a ladder, a mic, with sellot- uh, not a sellotape, rubber bands, with the mic on the ladder and a sock over it and just recording. It's just innovative stuff, isn't oh, it? Oh, you can't take back them days. They're the best. Yeah, exactly, man. I had the most fun then, for sure. Yeah. 100%. So, were your mum and dad together? Or no, it's just my mum. I grew up with my mum, basically. And how yeah, was yeah. that? All right. Yeah, a single mum. I grew up with my mum and my nan. And my nan passed away when I was like 11. Uh, so, it's just been me and my mum. Yeah. But yeah, single mum life's good, man. Mm. Flipping. You get to talk to women a lot more easier, man. Because yeah, yeah. you're just surrounded by women your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's had loads of aunties and godmothers and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's wicked. Yeah, yeah. It's a good vibe still. Well cushioned. Good balance. Yeah, very, man. As a guy as well, there's a lot of guys that don't get enough female education, man. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, they don't know. They're just very, like, I don't know. You know what I mean, innit? <laughs> Certain guys don't know how to talk to women. <clears throat> like, Yeah, yeah, I do know what you mean. Um, balance is important. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, I would imagine that through that, your diction and clarity and what you want to put across on a track comes through a lot more... Uh, a lot more uh, uh, on balance, it, I guess it... As an, uh, an element of em- of uh, empathy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say yeah. It's like sort of like listening. Like you sort of listen more. So when you write lyrics, you're sort of talking to people that can, what's the word? Like understand what you're saying and re- mm. uh, relate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you mentioned you know organized confusion. Um, I think with the British, um, and to to their strength and their faults. We, we lean heavily to New York. I do, personally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's just It's all about the lyric delivery. You know what I mean? We can't quite relate entirely. But, I mean, big up everybody that's into... You know what I mean? I hear the cars go past all the time from the studio. Yes, we, we like Tupac. But he he was influenced by East Coast. Yeah. Pretty heavily, you know? And so were a lot of the early 90s, like Alcoholics and Diamond D and them. It was, yeah. just sounded Lo- like boom Like Loot Pack as well. Yeah. Big, big fan of Loot Pack, yeah, but yeah, time. they're West Coast. What is it with, what is it with Britain and, and, and the lyric the lyrical content? What do you reckon that is? Like? It's way more gritty, yeah, I'd say. It's, you saying, actually, West Coast is quite laid back rap. Obviously, you've got NWA and stuff. Yeah. That's, that's very politically... Yeah, charge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a bit different. But yeah, with the West Coast, it's usually like, I don't know, like way more laid back than East Coast. Mm. Maybe it's because of the where they live and stuff. Mm. Maybe it's like, you see that Bristol rap and London rap. Mm. Bristol rap's quiet, like chilled out, happy, have a good time. <laughs> London rap's like, fuck you, I'm poor. Mm. Da, da. Like, I reckon, yeah, it definitely mm. like influences the way you talk and mm. stuff like that. Yeah. Same with graffiti, innit? Like, there's just an, an, just an attack, and an aggressive, like, like uh, a, 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 um, a sandstorm. 
that I would imagine. Yeah, that's how I that's how I, I interpret graffiti in London. It's like a sandstorm all the time, beating. Yeah, the city. yeah, yeah. It's rough and gritty. Yeah. Like, you saying that if you go to Europe, their style is well different. I'm yeah. not a huge fan of European style. Some of it's mental, yeah. but maybe that's why it's just sort of like. Mm. More relaxed, like it's not so crazy. Why are we so intense? In I London? don't know. It's weird though, because we're the, really, we're apparently really polite, but we're like really passive aggressive as well. <laughs> so it's just like it's like the best, it's the worst of both worlds. You know what I mean, yeah. But like, excuse you... me, excuse me, you prick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why everyone was wearing the COVID mask. They kept on an extra longer so they could really say what they thought. <laughs> yeah, under their breath. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, when I had a mask on at one point, I was spitting bars, and like because sometimes when you're on a train and you're listening to like music and stuff. I was like, oh, no one can even know what I'm doing. Yeah, this yeah. is like I'm chewing, chewing on myself. Like, like, just rapping the totally, bars. Totally, like, dude. I mean, it, it, the beatboxers are like, you know, <laughs> it was that, it was that. It was, and it, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. The the social, just going back to the George Carlin thing, really. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the social economic of it all with Britain as well. It's like, I think we are suppressed with, with our, you know, with these boundaries that we've set on class and stuff and i think that you know what i mean for artists that makes the best recipes like when you're you know on the floor and you you know you've got to go and do a bit of hustle here and there you know what i mean from rock and roll onwards it's like the moment you get like it's like do it yourself shit that's, that's the best sort of, shit yeah, yeah, right yeah yeah the most stuff yeah the best inventions is doing it yourself like leaving the artist to do their mm. shit and like get on with it because yeah when 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 money gets involved it usually gets a lot more watered down yeah it's true yeah yeah and I'm not talking you know no disrespect to anyone that comes from a privileged background and does music Kate Bush smashed it yeah you know what I mean like but there is this sort of thing like would there be another oasis now would there be another Task force in the but same it, way. Is, isn't it the same when, like, say you look at actors and stuff and, like, you see they come from... They struggle to get into a famous acting role or whatever. Mm. I, I suppose art is, like... It wants to tell a story of how someone has gone from zero to hero, in it, And yeah. it's part of the story of being an artist. Yeah. Well, you have to have that part, like, fulfilled, innit? Yeah. So as an artist, you're probably, like, you're always chasing that fulfilment, I suppose, innit? Yeah. But you saying that George Carlin is very, like, with listening to him as a kid, he definitely inspired my lyric writing and stuff. Really? Especially, like, anti-government and sort of, like... Really, like, you see how he's quite, not rude, but it's very, like, it's not the most politically correct humour. Mm. And I sort of took that into my lyrics as, like, I want to... I, I suppose at the beginning it was shock value, and now it's more intelligent, sort of, like, more cryptid stuff, in it. Mm. Whereas at the beginning it was like, oh, fuck your mum and your aunt's sister or whatever. Mm. Now it's more like, I'll say things a bit more clever. Like, yeah. if that makes sense, isn't it? It does make complete sense. I think people can just, you know, be misunderstood. They they misunderstand the likes of, um, uh, what's his name? Um, well, I mean George Carlin, for instance, uh, and um, who's the other guy? Bill Hicks. Yeah, Bill Hicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's pretty sick. Probably. Richard Pryor. I'll go yeah, with that yeah. as well. They're misunderstood because what may seem as quite aggressive is that fluctuation between what is comedy and what is actual fact. Yeah, exactly. But that's that isn't that part of the joke? Like the rude jokes are there to like. St stay out the fact that it's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If someone tells a joke that's like sort of offensive, I'm guessing the the objective of that joke is to point out that it is offensive and that we shouldn't do that offensive thing. Because mm. otherwise, otherwise they would just be a misogynist or a racist or like. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be booked if they were not clever enough to like do these things. It's, it's so true. You're booking them for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, do you know that uh, Jimmy Carr? He done something mm. recently and he did like really offensive jokes or whatever. And then people are like, I went to see Jimmy Carr and I was really offended. I'm like, you've known Jimmy Carr's been about for donkey yeah, years. Yeah. You know what you're going for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, him out. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you offended? Like, there's there's more than one radio station or theatre to watch an event. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. I don't like... I don't know, I don't like One Direction, but I don't write notes to the company like, I can't believe One Direction released this song. I'm so angry at how they talk about happy things all the time. Mm -hmm. but, but, like, get, get a life, yeah. man. Like, just yeah. I'm vegan, I go to a meat shop, you know what I mean? It's like, not happy with the meat here, it's a bit too bloody. <laughs> See, it's just it's dumb a bit shit. too real for me. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit too real. I prefer, I prefer vegan free. Yeah. Yeah. Why is this not mushroom? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's true, man. People get too soft about things. I and, think so, man. And also, like, but just, you know, reverting it back to music a little bit, like, you know, back in the day, John Lydon, without a doubt, loved Britain. He didn't create God Save the Queen because he didn't. 
Is it? Is that same? Yeah, kind of yeah, exactly. Is that, that's a good. That's a good example, actually. Yeah, exactly. You loved them. It's like people that have their heart on their sleeve and really go the distance. It may seem like they're pointing a the gun at you, but actually they're not. It's they're, they're telling the story. Yeah, well, they're sort of living the story as well. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like, I feel sorry for you guys. Like. And I say you with inclusive with you. What well, struggling artists? Do you mean? Right? Well, I'm struggling. I don't exactly, think it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more what I mean is like you you adopt very much a circumstantial. You 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 bring a circumstance into the way that you drive your lyrics and stuff. What like a reason behind it? Like yeah yeah yeah. Or, I get or narrative. Not not so, even so much as that. For me, for instance, and this is a blessing and a curse. I know what how long it takes for me to set my mind up ready to be creative and I punch in, punch out. Then there's the um, the Bob Dylan version where you have to have these shared experiences and you're right. actually speaking as a spokesperson. That's what I get from you. Do you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean, yeah. It's, that's what I was saying earlier about listening, isn't it? I'd, I'd like to be a people person where if I say something, I've got a certain, like, say the more politically charged lyrics, mm. like what I write about that, I want people to be like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Like it's definitely from that. That's true. Yeah, mm. yeah. I agree with you there, hundred mm. percent. But you also, I, I do feel like, and this is on some of the mixtapes, man. I've been, you know, big up crept, hold tight, oh, CBM. Oh yeah, hold tight. Look, come on, wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, come yeah. On. If you're not watching this, then this is a legend. Oh yeah, yeah. You're gone, if you're, you're not gone. watching <laughs> CBM gums, go get them as soon as you can. Probably sold out now. Yeah, yeah. That's why you got to get them quick. Proper, proper. The people look. Um, but yeah, your your bars on these mixtapes, man. Like I remember, I was I was out with the boys, pick up CBM, and we were just driving around. I think we were going down south, heading your neck of the woods, and they chucked the uh, the CD in in the in the in the machine, and yeah, oh, like your voice just like <coughs> cut the fuck through, like was, piercing. All of a sudden, and you know, it was like you know, this is you know, it's background fodder, but then all of a sudden, you came through, and I was like. Yeah, is that, is that John? And then they're like, yeah, and I was like, dude, it doesn't, it wasn't like you didn't sound like you, it's just you cut so f fine through. Yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck, you know, that's, so that's, fun. yeah. A lot yeah, of people man. tell me not to shout too much. Like, shout. Sh shouts to prove, actually, because back in the day I used to rap sort of like, like company flow, like, bada, 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 like, but to hip hop, because I come from the grime element, mm. I've, I've always been like, da, 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 like that mm. sort of rhythm. And then shouts to prove, because he's like, you need to take breaks and slow down. Because yeah. it's just too much for people to like, Taken at once, but the shouting element as well. Sometimes people like don't shout, but I can talk to you now. But if I don't shout, you, you won't listen. Crazy, like, yeah, exactly. You pay attention a lot more, I think, mm. which is why I try and I've learned in my older years not to scream. Like, there's a difference between shouting and screaming, especially if I'm a bit drunk at the studio. It goes from that, just shouting like that. And this <laughs> is not always good. <laughs> I'll pick up Bar um, Bar for Bar show as well. That was a, yeah, yeah, the Taze, yeah, shouts yeah, to Taze, taze man, for having that, me. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you've been on a couple of times and yeah, yeah. I clocked a bunch of times as well. So yeah, you had me over the lockdown period, man. There was some sick shows, man. Yeah, pick up Ill. THC Radio again. Just check these out, man. Dial them in. You know what I'm saying? Um, comments below as well if you know what we're talking about here. Yeah, please do. Um, so grime. So you, what? So you? This was a this was a a, 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 a a growing period of like being into like just that sort of genre. Yeah, I wrote like this is about 14, 15, 16 age. Yeah. I'd say I started writing to like I don't know like like hip-hop and grime. And then obviously grime was more fun to do because everyone at school was doing it. No one really knew about hip-hop, do you know yeah. what I mean? There's like, I met a circle of... This is how I got into graffiti. When I got into... I'll talk about graffiti in a bit, but when I got into graffiti, that's how I got shown, like, non-fiction mm. and, like, real other real hip-hop. And that's how I got into hip-hop as well because mm. the culture of hip-hop sort of takes in all elements, do you know what I mm. mean? So you end up knowing DJs, MCs, breakdancers, beatboxers, mm. graffiti writers, and we all, like, come together. Yeah, it's yeah. like a tight-knit community. Yeah, yeah. The community is everything. I mean, not that there isn't one with grime. It's, and also, it does lean its hand to graffiti in many, many ways. And it's more... But I know what you mean. I sort of lent that way, basically. like Because I loved, like, ghetto, devlin, that sort of lyrical sort of prowess. But then grime didn't have that... There's not many people doing that. It was more a hype energy sort of music. Mm. And I took, obviously, I like that hype energy. That's why I'm screaming at people. Mm. But um, yeah, I just found hip hop to be more me, man. I'd like, because I do graffiti, I love making beats. I don't DJ. I can't dance, kind of. I can dance <laughs> the drum and bass like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I sort of like, I preferred that culture over the gram culture. It just yeah. sort of swayed me that way. I always find, like, when it comes to UK hip hop, particularly having roots within it, I, I, I see it as like my first. My first skill set, my first, my, 
my first place. My it's a community. Yeah, where you felt. Yeah, yeah, yeah where you felt like you were yeah. part of something. Yeah, for sure, man, hundred percent. I love that shit. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. The graffiti for me, especially, man. Because I remember I, I started when I was like eleven, maybe, mm. and I got caught once in school. I was, um, mate, it's like the dumbest shit. But I had like these. My mum worked in an office. She had loads of little stickers. So I wrote like sales or something on these tiny stickers like that. Mm. And when you get up from assembly, I'd stick it on the back of the chair. And by the time, like, there was about 40 of them and they pulled me over one assembly. It was like, don't be doing this. And a few years later, I just sort of forgot about it because I was like, oh, I just sort of won't do that again. Got about to 14, 15. I was in maths class, maybe. Mm. And these guys were sketching. I was like, oh, shit, you're sketching. Would you write? Da, da, da. And then that, we just become friends. And then they knew about hip hop. And then from that, that's where my journey sort of started. Damn, man. so that was where it all yeah. kind of unfolded. That like just at the very end of school. People don't realise, I mean, again, big up to everybody that checks the show. I know we're not we're not all into graph, I get it. But without a single doubt, it's the it's the out of the whole scene, it's the most um open and susceptible to anybody that's into any sort of music. You it doesn't matter what colour you are, gender, race, anything, it's like you are a graph writer, yeah. well, you better fucking be good then. What, yeah, yeah, what you got? yeah, exactly, yeah. And it, it becomes, it, it consumes you, doesn't it? It's fun, man. Like, it's a very, like, I don't know, like, I remember being really, really young and seeing, like, obviously I saw, like, all the FDC lot up mm. when I was a kid around Croydon. Of course, Croydon, Yeah, like, fundamental. Sir, Dyer, yeah. Flipping, and then all the, like, all the big guys as well. Yeah. They're the, that's pretty much who I used to see and be like, that's sick. It's, it's sort of like, how have they done that? Yeah. It's the surprise element of it. That's what I've always yeah. liked. Because you turn up in the morning and there's just a huge dub. Like, when was that done? When is it, yeah. when you're a kid like that walking through Croydon, you've got no idea. Like, Especially with the likes magical. of Sir and Jay and Char mm. and fucking... Exactly. Well, Shining Quest there. around those areas as well, weren't they? They were pretty... Yeah, prevalent. Sir and Jay up with them. They're the two people that I remember growing up. Like. Mad. Yeah, it's so sick, man. One thing that... Big up UK Frontline, one thing... That I was, yeah, big up Frontline. Yeah, actually. man. One thing that they said to me, because I've you know, been putting a few bits up myself, and they, they, they reminded me how Sir... Never stuck to the same style. No, it's ever. Bare different ones. Yeah. Now it's, I see it. Well, I don't have Instagram anymore, but I was looking at. I can't remember. The old city one. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see all, all the old account. sir stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. like no way. Like, yeah. Some of them I remember. Yeah. I'm like shit, I forgot that was even there. Like, Just take it for granted that he was constantly switching, and yeah. all of them were doing it. I mean, later on, you know, you know, with swag and um, Avon and. Vids and them, they, they, that kind of took a, a more kind of regimented stamp approach. I feel that's London style, man. Yeah, very much like, so. I yeah. love, but I love that London style. I grew yeah. up, like, especially going on trains to like. Yeah, yeah. What was the graph shop called in Clapham Junction back in the day? Uh, uh, all City, wasn't it? Was, was it, it all, city? all City? No, no, no. H no HQ was Brixton. I can't remember. I can't. Yeah, sorry. It's, comments below. Comments, comments remember, below. Yeah. Comments yeah. below. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I was about fourteen, fifteen, going there and flipping. You get the slam door trains. So mm. You go get your paint pen, and then you brighten the. Those are the fun times, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah. sick. You felt fr it's, fr it's freedom as well. You realise, like, this is what I love about graph, yeah? You realise that no one's really in control. They might create the illusion that they're in control, but no one is in control. So true. Ten Foot's a very good example of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It just shows you that no one's really in control of this society. We're all just wandering around. Oh, no, it's, we're getting a bit deep, innit? No, I love yeah. it. But, yeah. What's the response to that, though? What is What, what can... Any, like... I mean, we're in Honestly, a, we're really, in a whole man. new world now compared yeah. to what it was in the night. It's too but... dishonest now. Like, it's too easy to get away with stuff. And like mm. all the stuff that's going on now, I don't know. But I don't know whether it matters. It's always been going on, but it's just hot because it's it's much easier to distort life now. And mm. people, this is what bought off and silenced by gizmos and toys. Everyone's yeah. everyone's got a phone that they can use. Or it's yeah. horrible when you go pub or something, and then you look around and you're the only one not on their phone like that. I'm so like, this true. is weird, man. It's <gasps> very strange. You know what, and I, I did think that at a time when we were, you know, I was jumping, I jumped on a train and I saw everybody on their phones and I was like, yeah, but well, they used to be newspapers. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, when yeah. you're in a social situation where you've got, you've got so many other options to be doing something else, it's telling, isn't it? Do you remember that film, Human Traffic? Yeah, of Yeah, so do you know when they're in the pub talking? Yeah. Like, no phones, no distractions, yeah. everyone's just like, it's just, it feels like a community. Try watching that now, that'd absolutely spin us out. They'd be yeah, like, yeah. Oh, no phones. No one's on their phone, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. When you watch films, actually, you're like, rah, why has no one got a tablet? You're like, shit, that was made in, like, 2001. Like, no one was like that then. It's really gone that way. So, see, that, that, that does ultimately trouble society. That does... It breeds a whole different kind of sound. Yeah. Musically, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, man. 
Like, how quickly can you go to the chorus? Yeah, also, it's easy to make music now, isn't it? So everyone can do it. I yeah. think this is how... It's nice that you can be so widespread, but it just means it's, um, I suppose, less regulated, isn't it? Yeah, it's do you know what I mean? Regulated. So it's just easier, which I don't mind, obviously, but mm. there's... Uh, what's it called? You've got to have, like... Ah, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You've got to have some sort of threshold where you're like, look, this isn't good. Do oh, you, you, know you mean a lane? A USP? A US, you, there you go. Is that, so, is that what you mean? So, like, you've got to kind of... You've got to carve your identity a little bit more. Yeah, 100%. Well. You've got to, Yeah, you've got to be unique. Yeah, you're right. USP, unique selling point, 100%. Yeah, yeah. God, I hate, it's words like that, isn't it? It's words I like, like that, that. USP. <laughs> I've, I've not heard, like, not heard yeah, the use yeah, like yeah, that. No, no. Well, you're doing it. So, you know, it's a, it's a difference between saying it and doing it, and that's the problem. It's like, that's lots of people... This world, you've got to jump in at the deep end and go for it and find that USP. Were you saying that um, one year I went to Croatia Outlet Festival? It's like 2014, maybe. Big that up. That's a wicked festival. But man. I went there with just uh, my CDs to sell and no money, and I made it back basically. So that's, that, that that's shit. what I mean. Like, that's, that's that drive. I love like, that. The shouts to Dauer because he always like. Big up Dauer. Yeah, 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 I met yeah. Dauer. Big up Dauer. He's my G man. Yeah. But fucking yeah, he always like tells me that's sick because I just fucking went for it. Yeah. It's like, it's good, man. Do you it's know what I mean? That, Mate, I'm not going to lie, it was scary though, flipping. I woke up because obviously I sold enough to like get home. I was like, yeah, yeah, put stuff in the tent, go out, have a beer. Woke up on the beach, there's loads of girls behind me like, oh, you were so funny before you fell asleep. I was like, oh, okay, okay, where's my bag? And they're like, you didn't have a bag. And this had my passport, so yeah. and so, and it was literally on the beach getting swept up by the... Stop fucking... it, because you left it there? Yeah, yeah, I just obviously Pride wandered off. Come and around. then, yeah, it was just yeah. about to come in. I ran over, grabbed it, everything was in there, touch wood. Thank you, Nan. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was scary, but man. But yeah, I made it home, to here to tell the tale. Yeah. But I love doing shit like that. You couldn't do that anymore now, though. The next year I went to a festival in the UK uh, to sell CDs, because I remember being there, and uh, people would be like, um, I haven't got a CD player. But like, have you got a car? He'd be like, yeah. But there you go, put it in your car. Da, da. Next year, I went to the same sort of blag and they were like, oh, my car hasn't got a CD player. Have you noticed all the new cars haven't got any? Yeah. CDs are obsolete. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. This is why we only did vinyls and digital. Well, that's coming back in a big way, vinyl. 100%, that's, that's man. The, that's, the word on, that's the word from the press. It is, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I used to love the... I, I love to make something out of nothing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, used yeah, to, yeah. I, I still do, you know, because you are the control of your own destiny. It's just a more creative way of going. Like You can, yeah. have, you can have all this stuff in the world, but it doesn't mean you're going to be good with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's, it's a hard one to, like, explain. But, yeah, like, you can have all the tools that you want. But if you... I suppose, yeah, you can have all the saws if you want, but if you're not a carpenter, you're not going to do a good job. Like... So true. I yeah. couldn't do that for love and money. <laughs> well, not without. Yeah, <laughs> I think we're here. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, I, I think hustle should be should be something that is pressed on artists before they even start yeah, manufacturing their shit. It's just like you do know that this isn't going to be fucking easy. Yeah, you should be, <laughs> it's like those life lessons that you, you should get as a kid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, when a kid just like grows up and then. There's a funny George Carlin quote, actually. It's like, some of these kids grow up and then it's only until their 20s they hear the real words that you see. You're a loser. Get the fuck out of here. You're mm. fired. Yeah. Like, until then, they're just propped up. Especially in school. Like, school's mm. like... What's the... Oh, he, he talks about... It's like, children are our future and we should care about the children. And, like, everyone's being molly-cuddled. Yeah. Like, no-one's being told the real life of, like, not all of you are going to have a yeah. good job. One of you, 30 children, is going to work in McDonald's. Mm. One of you, 30 children, is going to be sweeping up the streets. Mm. So-and-so. Like, they need that real-life sort of... They need to bring back musical chairs and, and oh my God. birthday parties. <laughs> Does it, you know do they I mean? not do that anymore? No, well, I think... Well, what, I'm, I haven't recently been to a party with one, but... Is it because it's exclusive? Uh, yeah, being exclusive or whatever. Excluded out, you know, can, the music stops and wow. someone's lost a chair. But that, that even that is basic... Basic life principles. Yeah, morals. Like, yeah, oh, it's not your, it's not your go. It's not your go, baby. Isn't Off you go. Go yeah. next year. There's another musical yeah, chair. Yeah, like, exactly. It might be your fucking. Exactly. Year. Well, I'm, I'm all about that. That's, That's a good thing. analogy. Yeah, right? it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I got more. Hold on. Nah, for real though. Like, there is this bit where things like learning how to manage money and debt. Credit cards. That doesn't really get... We didn't get explained Wouldn't, in my yeah, school. Yeah, it wasn't taught when I was in school. I think it's only taught to Jacob Rees-Mogg and wherever them politicians go. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. did you ever see that old 
footage of him. He's about six or nine or whatever it is. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm going to put my money into stocks and trades and bonds. And yes, like, I did see that. Yeah. Yes. And he's nine, ten, whatever years old he is. He's Google that shit. Yeah, yeah, have a look it up. He's a little kid, though. So he was obviously getting taught how to manage money mm. at a young age. And like, I, I, that is something I would love to have just... But obviously you don't get your credit cards until you're a certain age, but at least know the fundamentals. Yeah, and the consequences of it all. Yeah. That's the thing. Because if you don't know the consequences... I know a lot of my friends, you just like, yeah, you get it, and then you're in debt for 10 years. Yeah. It's like people that go uni, they're like, oh, let's go uni and spend all this free money. Yeah. And then you're working it off until you God knows how long. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just swings and roundabouts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uni is our friends. We we do get these awesome billings of events where you got, you're on a lineup of killer fucking artists and... It's a ready built audience, like straight off the bat. You're like, you, you, you gross a great fan base. With yeah, that's true. A university world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's a good market to have, man. It is. You need balls loads of in that. spare money to spend that they'll yeah. pay back in 10 to 15 years, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I will go, go on then, mate. That's do you do true. a lot of gigs? A lot of gig, gig I went life real? Shouts to Morgasmic. Uh, I did a show in Electroworks last Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. Uh, shouts to DJ Sue guy. I did his birthday on Saturday. Uh, I'm doing too many. I'm supporting too many teas in June in Exeter. Nice. So that'll be on the. I believe it's the sixth. Don't quote me, but it'll be more on my Facebook details to come. Um, apart from that, I'm trying to sort out some festivals at the moment because um, obviously the album's out now. So yeah, we're just trying to get some shows. Pushing the shout out. But yeah, yeah. Some gigs coming up. That's, see, I told you we get here first in the game. Exactly, exclusive. Exclusive. That's just fucking sick, man. Yeah, so, yeah. so as trying far to be as, busy, man. Yeah, man. You are busy, you're, bro. You're busy. Like we were, we were nearly not going to make today happen. Well, That's yeah, how busy yeah, yeah. you were. <laughs> um, tell me uh, where people can get this then. Where can On they get band the camp. Uh, yeah. If you go to the Cracker John Violently Ill band camp, if you just put into Google Cracker John Violently Ill, it should come up as the first. Um, Search on the thing. Oh, yeah. um, if not, come see me personally. I'll be having some vinyls. Like, I'll give one to yourself. Yes, my I'll guy. have a few. Uh, but yeah, or if not, shout Violently Ill on his Instagram or Facebook or Ill Records website, which I believe is Ill Records. Which he's done in the hat, might be. Yes, if, if you can see the hat, you're not looking at it. Yeah, Ill yeah. Records. Shouts to Violently Ill every time. Kind of goes back to the theory I was just throwing out there about the New York influence, like you know the the, the you know the the, the low the bucket hat, hat, yeah, the bucket the, yeah, yeah. hat and the Adidas. I've got the show yeah. toes on with yeah. the Adidas trousers. It's all of that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's this, yeah. I've definitely, obviously, I wear clothes like this for comfort, but it's definitely come from watching or being influenced by that sort of mm. dynamic of hip hop. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Cypress Hill first album EPMD later on they all had the, that kind of bucket look the kind of drop down kind of I uh, just all added to the effect didn't yeah it? it's a gutter isn't it mm. it just looks like it. Red Man's good at that as well amazing at that I love Red Man that's, uh, that's another good example Muddy Waters <sighs> is probably one of the best al- obviously, album obviously have yeah. your opinion what the album There's a the Dark Side but I think Muddy Waters mm. is insanely good Beast yeah and it's his third album yeah. so that's another there's not many artists that do that. I don't want to start naming people that don't do it because then people are like, oh, duh. <laughs> put flipping, yeah. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but EPMD as well, business owner, personal. M- mate, what? yeah, exactly. That's Epic. another good example. Yeah. yeah. They're just ins- like, they, they obviously progressed with time. There's not many artists that do that. I, I'd like to hope to think that this is as good or better than my last album. Mm. So otherwise, why are you not? But it's, I'll tell you also a good example. If I listened to myself as Curious B when I used to be that and I was still the same... I'd be like, well, there's no point doing it. Do you know what I mean? Do you like, do you like Curious B before? I do Cracker like John? it. When I listen to it now, I'm like, oh, these bars are really simple. There's a lot. I don't like using similes and metaphors. So I hate yeah. using the word like. But obviously, when I was Curious B, I could hear loads of like, not hot like the sun, but stuff like that mm. in it. Just way more simpler. In my head, I'm like, rah, I can definitely tell them I'm up and coming. Tell me, for, for the people at, at home that may not know that what you're referring to when you say Curious that. Curious B is my old rap. No, I mean like oh, what? saying the word like. and Oh, so it's like similes and metaphors. So when yeah, people it rap, about. it's like, I'm hot like the sun, or I'm as cold as the polar bear mm. sitting in a freezer, mm. or like I'm as high as a plane in a spaceship on Mars in mm. Jupiter's... About, like it's just like it's a bit sad, man. Mm. Like, it's, but the thing is, obviously, said too many times, especially it suddenly becomes this. Trick. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, there's certain words that shouldn't be used in hip hop. I won't go for it now, but there's certain words that just doesn't sound nice when you say it. Really? Yeah, like I don't know, fairy. <laughs> like it just it just sounds weird. Like yeah. I don't maybe away with the fairies. That sounds good. Like I'm just trying to think of an example now. 
like pooch. Yeah, yeah. Like, you well, don't call a dog a pooch. I'm here with my pooch. Or whatever. It just sounds like, like that word shouldn't, like, should be, I don't know, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't exist in See, a this is See, this is the mind of a lyricist. This is what yeah, they do. Def- this is lyrics. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm very, like, when I listen to a song, that's a good example. When you listen to a song, do you listen to the beat or the lyrics first? Yo, I have this argument with certain people. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't hear that? Because they're so on the beat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm a much the, more I'm, lyric. Yeah, man. yeah, 100% the same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why, would you, why would you even turn on a tune knowing that it's got vocals just to listen to the beat? Yeah. <laughs> You're clearly not in the right camp. You yeah. know, go back to some, like, ninja tune or something. Producers do that a lot, though. <laughs> like, especially yeah. when I've worked with producers, like, finally all too late, when you when you sit and, like, listen to tracks together, mm. you're like, oh, I did the same. It's like, did you hear that part? Yeah. It's like, oh, no, but did you hear that part of the beat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're yeah. like, no, I didn't. And you know, that's why it's good to work with producers, because then you, like, learn other parts of the music you listen Yo, to. And also, you're not so precious. People, sometimes you need a second ear. 100%. Yeah, 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 I'm with that. I work better with people. I do. I get a lot more done in a collaboration than I do on my own. Mm. I've just set up, a, like, a budget studio at mine just so I can, like... It, it works, it's good enough, Brilliant. yeah? But yeah. the thing is, I'm not... Like, I work... If I go to... Shouts to HK, the cat burglar. We're currently, like, working on some music at the moment. When I go to his at the studio, I get a lot more done because I'm in the zone and mm. da When I go home, go to bed, wake up, sit on my computer, I'm just like... There's no drive... Yeah. Whereas when I'm in the studio, it's like, right, I've got to get this done. Mm. Like, I've only got this specific amount of time. Mm. Whereas when you're at home, it's like, ah, it's only one o'clock. I'll do something at three. Let's watch mm. Family Guy or whatever. Too the much hell, freedom, right? see, isn't it? Yeah, it is, man. Bam- it's a gift and all of a sudden, it's... yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, what, what the technology at your fingertips kind of thing, and you being able to go about your business and record in the most random of places. Yeah, yeah. some people are good at it. Like, I, I, I know people who have got like home studios. They do get a lot done. Like. But yeah, I just for some reason I work better in a studio environment mm. rather than I work better with people. Sometimes on my own, you're right, I'm too lazy or you could like it could be done tomorrow or so and so. Like talking to a man who just released vinyl. You know what I mean? <laughs> this isn't a lazy business, bro. No, no, it's <laughs> this true, is it's like true. this is like you gotta wait six months for this thing to arrive and then you've probably made another two albums Mate, in the We time. had to wait wait. You know what, Adele, yeah, I, I don't know if this is true. I heard the reason because our vinyl was delayed by a substantial amount of time. Yeah. And I heard the reason was because Adele booked out all the pressing plants in the UK or whatever, so, or wherever it was in Europe or whatever, so no one could press vinyl for, like, two years because Adele hogged it all. What? So I don't know if that's true. Do, obviously, comment, make some comments if that's incorrect. But if it is correct, fuck you, Adele, man. Let's go viral with this Do one, baby. I mean? Damn, no way. Well, well uh, uh, listen... Nothing surprises me in in that in this game. No, exactly. That's what shows you what money can do. Money, money can do, but also can show you how important these things are. Because who would have thought it back in you know wire, lime wire times or Napster? Oh, mate, yeah. You know, they, they all of a sudden this has had some sort of resurgence. Which, yeah, you thought that was never coming back. It's yeah, true. I thought isn't it? it coming back. Yeah, it's true. Actually, I never thought about that. Crazy that, that, that she, she knocked it. She did. She locked off the whole fucking industry. Yeah. Hold on. Adele's here. Fucking clear deck. Yeah, isn't it? It's like, move out of my way. It's crazy, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, the future's bright, my brother. I the hope future so. Future's bright. Uh, um, bright as a star. So I guess you, you're going to have to get the next album in ASAP for the next order run of uh, the vinyl. We've already, st- doing we've more, already started it? it. This has got no features whatsoever. So mm. it's only got DJs as features. Yeah. Um, and the next album, we're going to get loads of different features from UK hip hop artists. I've obviously I've not shouted any UK hip hop out. I, when I got, I suppose, when, as I said, when I uh, got into non fiction and stuff, I got showed like Jest, Kalashnikov, mm. Universal Soldiers, really like Universal uh, yeah, Soldiers. Yeah, slept on as well, big up that. Yeah, 100%. 100% yeah. Ricochet's insanely good, mm-hmm, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Tommy Evans was sick, man. I met yeah. him recently. Big Shouts up Tommy. to Tommy Evans. Yeah. Big up Jess. Big he's up fucking, He's another gentleman, mm. Tommy, man. Yeah, proper yeah, yeah. Gentleman. Proper. And a deep thinker. Yeah, man. He's uh, he's big mad time. interesting to talk to, man. That's he, right. He may, I just, like, that's what I'm saying about listening. Like, when you meet certain people like that, you just want to, like, concentrate. You're like, I need to absorb this, mm. like, knowledge from this man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. It's well interesting. But yeah. yeah, I didn't really get into like, I won't be rude about it, but I never really got into UK hip hop too tough, man. Mm. And over the years, I've sort of like, yeah, mm. where I've got into the actual. Um, mm, we, got, we got a special guest, Fly. Fucking yeah, isn't it? Hello, Fly. It's that time of the year. But yeah, um, yeah where I got into hip hop, like, I got into US hip hop, and then gradually doing shows and da da mm. started just learning about people. But obviously, I got into like Jest and so and so, like the. The what do you call it? The top of the top of UK hip hop in that. Like yeah. Roots Maneuver. Like yeah, yeah. Like, like I can't lie. I mean, I had to reverse engineer my knowledge. Like you know, hundred percent. Same here. Yeah. It's like, and 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 more. That's more credit to the UK scene. 
you know. I yeah, think in this day and age you can yeah. reverse engineer where before you, if you didn't have the vinyl then it's gone. Yeah, you wouldn't even know, yeah. Mm. So there's, there's more in, yeah, it's way more informative now, so people mm. can track back and go into it. Mm. That's actually a good point. There's been a lot of resurgence of older rappers mm. that have like I suppose like Chester P's a good example. Mm. He I don't, I didn't see him for ages and now he's just like doing loads okay, of stuff yeah. again. Yeah. Farmer G as well, ten pound bag. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, on, it's, it's so good to yeah. see a resurgence in that as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, a thousand percent. goes to show, you know, what a legacy can, can do. But also, 100%. you know, we're, we're all of that age where it's like we are, we're the babies of the internet that have now grown up with at least a loose kind of understanding of how to plug into our own audience. Yeah, that's true. You know? And yeah, yeah. garner some younger ones as well. Yeah. It's the shit, man. I love it. It is. Big up the internet, man. So big, up, it. big up the internet crew. Yeah, My brother. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, you Never too, a chore. Well, man. Yeah. Hope you enjoy your present. I will, will. Fucking come on. We got shouts to everyone listening. Shouts to DFN, ADL, PBC, 645, CDS, SDS. Rest in peace, Eve Barker, Diffa, Respa, Run, Lady V. Mm. Shouts to everyone listening. Peace and love. Yo. And that it's was ready with that, that was Fuego. <laughs> and while we're down south as well, R.I.P. Dyer. All day. Mm. Come on. R.I.P. Dyer for sure, man. Yeah. All day, all day. Yeah, and, for sure. and Ty as well. Yeah, um, man. R.I.P. Ty. And Skipper. You, Jeez, well, really? You, oh, fucking yeah. hell, yeah. yeah. All south. It's all crazy, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what? Yeah, I Ty, I didn't, I knew of his music, but I didn't really like know it too tough. And obviously, when he passed away, I looked for his catalogue. He is insane, man. Mm. He's so good. I was, I was such right. a shame, like. Mm. It's just how it is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, and, and that's what legacy is about, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You've got to yeah, keep yeah, on putting 100%. It out. Yeah, so it's good, obviously, you've got to keep promoting people like that. Yeah, yeah man, albums and fucking just, yeah, you just got to keep pushing it and give people a flower when it's due. Yes, 100%. Big up man. without flowers on Big ups, yeah, exactly. Oh, hey. Safe, peace and love, everyone, oh, man. Right. Cracker John inside the house. Right, so if you don't know, get to know, follow him, get him bored. As soon as he's got his Instagram account back out. Oh, active, yeah. I haven't got on. Instagram at the moment. Catch you on Facebook <laughs> if you need to. Um, yeah, let's get working, man. Hey, yeah, this is not a test, man. Get involved, sharing is caring. And remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Don't get too drunk and fall on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit's painful. Mate, uh, I, I love high focus, yeah. Fucking went to their night. Verbs was there, poured me fucking rum. And then I like, w- walking home, then just went, what up? <laughs> like, woke up in the morning, like, thumb cut, face grip, like, graze. So there's a real moral in this? Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't yeah, yeah. That, on, yeah. <laughs> don't get too drunk. <laughs> Peace and love, man.